I'm now being joined by a journalist, a business journalist in Cape Town, South Africa, Annalisa Tuswa. Annalisa, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. What level of financing have you seen on the African front to soften the blow of COVID-19 on most vulnerable countries in Africa? Look, I think on a continental view, we've seen the IMF um, and the World Bank coming out saying about 55 billion US dollars is going to be dispersed into um, African countries. But I think on the South African side, which is, I mean, that's where, that's the much I can comment on. But I think on the South African side, we've seen the South African government launching um, the Solidarity Fund. And essentially the fund is, last time I checked that I think a week ago, it had about 2 billion rands in the country. And the president is also contributing about a third of his salary with his cabinet of ministers. We've seen listed companies at the Johannesburg Stock Exchange also, the CEO, their CEO saying that they'll be contributing about um, a third of their salaries. So I think on, on the continental view, we've seen can, um, the IMF and the World Bank coming out saying they'll be supporting African countries who are in a bit of a tight spot. But I think on the local side, which is the country where I come from, we've seen our government also also pushing the fundraising side to make sure that um, even disadvantaged communities don't don't lack when it comes to just the essentials. Well, how well would you rate us in terms of expanding our social net structures to help the 89% of workers in South Saharan Africa who operate in the informal sector? How would you rate that? I think on a scale of 1 to 10, I think we are in between, so I'd say 5. Um, remember, African countries, um, genuinely, our... Our dilemma in a lot of um, circumstances that we need to fight between social economics and actually the economy. So we have to, as much as we are trying to fight a pandemic, locking down our borders, we still need to be cognizant of our economies, if I were to put it that con in that context. So I think when it comes to tackling the issue around informal um, traders, we've done as much as we can. Um, in the South African context, again, we've seen our government on this side. When we did the lockdown, we made an, the lockdown announcement, I think, three weeks back. They included um, informal traders. So the small businesses that function next to taxi ranks, the smaller, smaller, um, we call them spaza shops. So those um, small businesses that are situated in townships, they were also included as essential services. So when you go and try and do your groceries, you don't have to go to the big supermarkets. Even the smaller supermarkets are included in the economy. Of course, that's not much because the informal trading economy on its own is one of the largest in, in, in the continent. So we are we still need to do more. I strongly believe we need to do more. So I'd say five out of ten. All right. So in the light of this pandemic, do you think the African continent wields any comparative advantage to other nations of the world given the pandemic? No. Um, and when I say no, I think the African, like I said before, the African continent, like many countries in the continent, have, have got a, a very big problem because our economies were not doing well long before the pandemic. So this is an added pressure. It's an added pressure to, to, to governments who still need to consider things like social grants while they actually try to find um, stimulus packages to boost the economies and small businesses. So I think we are quite in a disadvantaged um, position as a continent. But I think individually as African countries would also have to go back to our ministers of finances or just our basic economic budget, uh, financial budgets where we can go back and see which aspects we're going to have to either cut out or try and move finance, finances around. I think in the South African context, uh, we might have to try and cut down on funding state-owned entities. Um, those at this stage, they shouldn't be our priority. Uh, I think in social spending, we're still, we've still got a high population of uh, of, uh, that is actually unemployed. Our economy is growing at, well, it's actually at a, at, a, at a recession right now. So our finance minister would have to go back to his budget, which he tabled, I think, two months back, and try and revisit and see which parts of his budget might need to be cut down. Tusua, it's been nice having you on News on the Hour, and thank you for your contribution. Thank you for having me.